Okay, I'm trying to build an Arduino-based torch -like controller for my CNC plasma. Basically, a thing that'll read in the arc voltage from these two leads right here, coming from the plasma, compare them internally on the Arduino to a set point, and then output a signal to Linux CNC telling it to move the torch either up or down to keep it at the right height for cutting. Very simple idea. And it's been a pain in the ass to implement. <laughs> you know, I've been running into problems left and right Probably the biggest of which is the fact I'm not an engineer. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in some prior video, but uh, my degree was in physics, which is like engineering, but not at all the same. Because in physics, you got a whiteboard, and you put a capacitor on the whiteboard, and it holds charge. Easy peasy. In engineering, you got a breadboard, and you put a capacitor on your breadboard, and if you plug it in backwards, it explodes. <laughs> you know? And they don't teach you that in physics. <sighs> and when I learned that, you know, I got, I got quite the shock when I learned that. Uh, not, not a literal shock. It, it surprised me. Uh, I was not holding on the capacitor when it exploded. Otherwise, it would have gotten a physical shock as well. But yeah, it just caught me off guard. Uh, but now I know. And I guess now that I popped, you know, a cap, I'm uh, officially an engineer or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I'm learning. I'm pretty sure the idea will work in the long run. But for the time being, I just want to go over one of the more interesting issues I ran into and how I diagnosed it. And that is the flickering you see right there right now. Okay, so we'll go over the code and all that stuff at some later point when it's working. But for now, let's cover this one, one funny thing I had to fix. So a uh, brief overview of the parts. You got this all uh, enclosed in a UL listed IP68 enclosure. Very important. Uh, here in the board, we've got an Arduino Nano, uh, an LCD. I will say the whole assembly here is currently upside down, and that's why the numbers are reading all funny. Uh, I don't want to turn it around and risk like bumping a wire or something and making it get a fritzy connection. It's already fritzy enough. <laughs> and uh, it's under the table right now, so I'm not going to crawl under there either to shoot the video. Just, it's upside down, you can deal. The uh, potentiometer here is for adjusting your set point. Let's see, now it's uh, like 127, 129, etc., etc. There you go. Uh, the plasma comes in right there, and you read the voltage of that. Here, there's the inputs for power supply, and over here, there's a pair of relays for sending the up and down to the board, uh, the parallel port breakout board for Linux CNC. Now, these here just to stand in, uh, they will not work in real operation because they are far, far too slow. But I do have some optic couplers uh, in shipping right now, and when they arrive, I can put them in there, and they should work uh, much better. They'll be much faster switching for the signals, and they still provide isolation between the Arduino and the computer the way you want it. So, uh, we got this flickering here on the reading from the uh, wires and the analog digital converter. So, I didn't see this at every point in the debugging process. It really only appeared once I brought things down the shop and began testing them with the plasma. So, you know, with this funniness, I came up with a list of possibilities of what was going wrong. And the thing I noticed the most was that it didn't happen when I powered the computer or powered the Arduino off the USB for the computer, but it did happen when I powered it off the 12 volt supply or the 12 volt supply and the USB. Either one of those, if it was plugged into this 12 volt supply, it began going on the fritz after a while. So that was strange. And I thought about that and other possibilities and started going to the list of like, what could it be, right? Starting with most, most obvious and going to the least likely. So I thought maybe the 12 volt power supply here was just kind of fritzy because it's cheap, you know, it's probably has some sort of like noisy 12 volt voltage and that's messing it up. So I try a few different 12 volt power supplies. They all do the same thing. I try even a, a nicer computer power supply, right? An ATX supply that gives a pretty steady 12 volts. Same thing, begins flickering. Okay, so it's not that. Maybe having uh, this longer wire on the 12 volt supply was then causing it to pick up uh, noise from the stepper drivers or the plasma machine being on. So try it with them off, and you can see it's still doing it. <laughs> like the plasma machine, it's turned off right now, and it's still reading values other than zero. Uh, the steppers, they're unplugged, still getting this noise. I thought maybe, maybe it was noise from the plasma, and tried putting like an RC circuit on there, like a, a low-pass filter. Uh, that wasn't it either. Still getting the noise. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I turned the frequency of the, um, the analog digital converter readings up when I brought it down here from the upstairs where I was developing it, and uh, thought maybe if I slow that down, it'll work better. 
because if supposedly there's some capacitor in the ADC that has a charge for to give you a reading. Um, so I slowed that down by adding some delays in there. Same issue. Well, maybe it's that I'm running the LCD too often and refreshing that too much. Because I, again, I turned the frequency up when I brought it down here to the shop. And maybe that's inducing something on the signal wire. So I tried turning that down. Same thing. Whoa, what, what the hell is going on? Well, I noticed one thing in all this testing. And that is, I was getting the other uh, fritziness, again, only when the 12 volt supply is plugged in. And it didn't start immediately. So you plug it in, about 40 seconds later, it begins getting all fritzy. If you restart the Arduino immediately, you know, like, uh, like so, once it boots up, and then it goes back on the fritz. But if I unplugged it, waited a while, came back and restarted, then it didn't for another 40 seconds. Hmm. So it sounds like it needs a cooldown period. Like a literal cooldown period. Let's test that out. Yep. Son of a dick. It's a heat thing. <laughs> it's it's a heat thing. Yeah, it's making it uh, get unstable readings. So let me try my best to explain what the fuck is going on uh, and how I'm going to get around this. So the Arduino uh, has a integrated or yeah chip that it, it runs at five volts. Right. You can power it off of more than that, like the twelve volts I'm giving it right now. But it only takes five. So on board, there's a regulator that steps it down to five volts, okay? That five volt uh, regulator is also used as a reference for your analog digital conversion readings, okay? Now, as it does that step down more, it heats up and gets unstable, and that's what's causing it to spaz out. Now, again, to demonstrate, if I blow it with air again, cool it off, we'll see it once more, it stabilizes. So, why am I feeding it with 12 volts anyway, right? Why not just power it off the USB? Well, I can't do that because a few things. For one, plugging in the uh, USB here, that's a bad idea since this is hooked to the plasma. It might at some point get a voltage spike from the plasma, which they then go up the USB cable to your computer and fry that. That's no bueno, okay? Uh, if we at least have this isolated there, the worst we can do is fry the Arduino, which is a cheap part and not hard to replace at all. Redoing all my Linux CNC stuff, that would be an awful time. So we don't want to power it off of that. Now I could power it off a wall wart instead, like you know the kind you use to charge your phone, and then still have the same cable. <sighs> but in theory, the 12 volt supply should be better for this application, because if you feed the Arduino with 5 volts, it still steps it down, you know, puts it through the regulator to 5 volts, and it ends up dropping it to more like 4.5, and then you end up having a 4.5 volt reference on your ADC which kind of squishes your, uh, your measuring range. And then the max signal voltage an Arduino can read is supposed to be the same as the input, input voltage you provide it. So if you power it off 5 volts and you feed it a 5 volt signal, that's fine. If you power it off 12 volts and feed it a 12 volt signal, that's fine. It won't explode on you. It just, it'll read, uh, it only reads 0 to 5. So between 5 and 12 then, it'll just say maxed out. Like the same thing as 5 volts. But if you only feed it 5 volts and it happens to get a spike at 6, you can fry the chip, which, you know, that's no good. So that's why I want to power it off of 12. You know, the uh, plasma here, it puts out between 0 and 300 nominally, and it has a voltage divider on it to step it down between 0 and 6. So feeding it off 5, you could, in theory, fry the chip. So I thought, you know, I'll use a 12-volt supply. That'll be safer. It'll be better. <laughs> Apparently not. So, uh, yeah, it's just the regulator on there stepping up, uh, stepping down the voltage and putting out heat and getting unstable and making it jump around like that. So my thought for fixing this then is instead I can power it off of 5 volts, you know, with uh, another 5 volt power supply separate from the computer. And then there's a 
3.3 volt regulator on here, they should be able to handle the step down from 5 to 3.3 much more easily without going on the fritz. You can use that 3.3 then as the reference voltage for your ADC, and then to get the same range off the plasma leads, use a, another voltage divider to put it in the range of 0 to 3.3 as opposed to 0 to 6. Yeah, I think. Hope that made sense. <laughs> Again, I'm learning this as I go. Uh, but yeah, it's a heat thing. Day and a half of my life on a fucking heat thing. God damn it. <laughs> but now that I figured it out, it is, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling. You know, now, now I got it. Now I can fix it and, you know, go on from there. <laughs>